toes to kick now for the... Good evening, everybody, and welcome to SESA Fan TV and another edition of the Sunday Bunch Live. With myself, Sean Middleton, on the panel tonight, we have Conrad Lee. We also have The Man Mistake. We have Michael Bowers. And we also have a guy who you've probably recognised quite a lot lately. He's done a lot of interviews. Um, he's also got the Red and White uh, Army podcast red. now, haven't you, yeah, Jack? Red and White podcast, red and white, yeah. Is it Red and White? Yeah, yeah. No, the Red and White um, Army is supporters of him now. Oh, no, Red and White podcast, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's Jack Dodds. He's been on a couple of times, <laughs> and he's obviously quite uh, popular now. Um, anyway, um, I just want to... Uh, see a quick apology. Um, yesterday I was doing an interview um, with with William Story, and I'd, obviously during the interview we done we, we kept the two minute distance for the, the full twenty two minutes or whatever it was. Um, but unfortunately, just a you know a little bit cynical myself, I um, took a couple of photos uh, with William, and um, we weren't adhering to the. The, um, the government guidelines. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't two meters, and for that, um, I put my hands up, and I, I, I apologise sincerely to obviously the lads who I've let down at uh, CFC Fan TV, and also my followers on Twitter, and uh, my friends and family. So I apologise uh, for that. It's all right, Sean. Don't worry. It's okay. <laughs> um. Anyway, um, I just want to. Uh, we'll go. We'll see us in the live chat. Remember, we're trying to get to 5,000 subscribers uh, by the end of the year. So please, please subscribe to our channel. Um, it's Nearly absolutely there. free. It doesn't cost a penny. So please, please subscribe to our channel. There's Sean's cap for a catchphrase. It's absolutely free. <laughs> it's absolutely right. free. Yeah, it free. doesn't cost Conrad. a penny. It's free. Huh? Oh, that that you, Conrad. No, oh, no, this is a uh, oh. what you call this is a uh, Death Star juice with Darth Vader keeping an eye on us as well. Okay, I'll, I'll give Sean you that. won't be too happy. That's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, I'll just go to the live chat. Um, obviously, Mad Mac Media, Evan Lads, Thomas Garrigan, Jack Lad, uh, Akisha Capfield, hi lads, um, Stephen Hensel, all right lads, um, and also as well, I'll just we'll, we'll see it near the end of the show. But we would like, obviously, for everybody from SA Fan TV, would like to obviously wish everybody a Merry Christmas uh, and obviously just, just stay safe and enjoy yourselves. And that was disappointing. Um, on Saturday, another thing I forgot to mention um, when I done before I done the interview, I didn't realise that Boris Johnson had, had addressed the nation that um, instead of five days now we're only going to have one. So I think the timing of the putting the the picture up on social media wasn't great as well. So like I say, I just apologise in advance and um, I'll mm. see. I put my hands up and you move on, Mike. That was all, 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 all I'll say for this in Sean's defence is yeah, it it wasn't the best idea. It's an honest mistake. It's happened. Uh, Sean is far from the only person in the world that is not going to be social distancing 100% of the time. I guarantee members of our own government will be like that because they're that incompetent to begin with, but I won't be too political. Um, as the fact of the matter has happened, move on with it. Um, and to be honest, when I've been on away days with Sean, he's one of the most germophobic people I know. So trust us, it's a mistake. That's it. <laughs> like, we, all, we all make mistakes in life, you know, I just got to yeah. get on with it and, and put it in the past like. I mean, unless you unless you Stuart Donald, in which case your mistakes tend to be correspondingly bigger. So you know. Yeah, yeah. and then we can just criticise. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, lads, um, the the League One games. There was a, there was a, I was quickly going through this, and we'll, what we're going to do t- tonight is we're going to um, go back in time to the 2015 and 16 season. Oh happy yes. Times. Happy times. Is that in the well, Sun Delorean? Sun well, Delorean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had a, we had a great manager, no disrespect to Lee Johnson. We had big Sam, not, not. we had some great players. <laughs> we will go to that, but first of all, um, the Mammoth Steak Friday night and also the games yesterday. Um, Friday night was uh, was Portsmouth versus Hull. Um, the game finished obviously Portsmouth 2 Hull. I, I don't know if you watched it, mate. Um, but obviously, what, what's your thoughts on the results on f- obviously Friday and the results yesterday, uh, um, Terry? I thought Friday night's result was fantastic. I wanted Portsmouth to win, I wanted Hull to get big because Hull were top. And Hull, we had an extra game in hand over Portsmouth. So for Portsmouth winning Friday night, it was a fantastic result for Sunderland. Yesterday, the results didn't really go our way, to be, to be honest. Didn't really go our way, to be honest. I mean, Lincoln, Lincoln are on fire, doing a good job. Um, Fleetwood dropped a couple of points. Peterborough and Ipswich didn't play for the same reason Sunderland didn't play. 
I think Ipswich are now going to be isolated for 10, 10 days and yeah. Peter Hutchinson for 10 days. So there's a few teams. To be honest, will the season even finish is another question to be answered or asked later on in the season. But um, yesterday, Doncaster won. Doncaster won fire. I went the standing got a draw against Blackpool. So, I mean, even crew went above us yesterday. So we're down to about 11th position. But it's not yes, about positions. get in! <laughs> not about positions at this moment in time. It's just about getting the team fit healthy and ready to play against Ackman and Stanley and hopefully Lee Johnson will have the team firing. Hopefully there won't be too, you know, I heard people saying after Newcastle missed a few games with COVID, a lot of their players have been blown and were really tired against Leeds when they got yeah. beat five. So I'm hoping our players don't come back in that kind of that kind of form and we can get back, win straight away against Ackman and Stanley and then make up for lost time. It's not going to be easy. In my mindset now, I've already settled for best position, a playoff position. That's in my mindset now. Anything better than that's a bonus. Yeah, well said, Terry. Before I come to you, um, Jack, I'll just go quickly back to the live chat. And also, if you could, uh, hit the like button, please. Um, and please, please subscribe to our channel. Um, I know it's, we're about 300 subscribers away from 5,000, but um, there's another competition what's coming your way. I'll, 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 um, I'll speak more about that later on in the show. Um, so please, please subscribe to our channel. It's absolutely free. It only takes a couple of minutes um, and it just helps us on the way. So please hit the like button as well. Um, and in the live chat, uh, Jack's on 138. Last time I checked, I think on about, is that your subscribers, Jack? Is that right? 100, 138, yeah. Trying to get 150 yeah. by the end of the year. Yeah, please subscribe to, uh, obviously, Jack's yeah. channel as well. Yeah, only um, 12 subscribers. Yeah, and also subscribe to uh, Fans React because he, obviously he's a part of that as well. Uh, it's a good 100%. channel. Paul's done a great job and some great guys on there. Uh, Umar, um, he sent me a message today. You know, nice lads. And Paul did as well. So thanks, guys. So please go and subscribe to their channel as well. Yeah, and also on. the Mammoth Stakes channel. Subscribe to the Mammoth Stakes channel and Michael Bowers, of course. Anyway, in the live chat, uh, Adam French, just keep the uh, great work, lads. Um <laughs> Jack plays FN says, I saw you eating chips the day next to the pet shop. <laughs> I, I, I was Who said that? Shop. <laughs> Jack plays FN. I was, I was eating Kerry and chips off the van down the uh, side. So <laughs> you, got, you caught us up there, mate. Anyway, Jack, um, we spoke about, spoke about it briefly. Uh, the results Friday night and the results yesterday. What's your feelings on the, on the results? Do you think they went our way? Well, I mean, when you look at them, some of them some of them didn't go too badly. Obviously, Holborn was, uh, sorry, um, Port, uh, Port was winning, sorry, yeah, it was probably a decent result. I've, I've just got them up here. Most of them haven't went our way. Um, you know, Accrington got a point. Um, Lincoln won 4 0. Fleetwood drew. Most of them haven't went our way, but I think what's more important is how we're doing. And I think if we're good enough, it won't matter how well other teams are doing. And if, if we can get ourselves in the best form possible, playing the best football we can, then it's irrelevant how other teams will do it because we're knowing League One how inconsistent teams up the top are. And you know, we know like from now to the end of the season, every team's going to lose a few games and drop a few points. We've, we've been in this league long enough now, uh, long enough now to know what the crack is with, with, with teams at the top. They will drop points. They will drop yeah. a lot of them. They'll draw and lose games towards the end of the season. So if we're playing our best football and we're in the best form, it'll be irrelevant. We need to focus on getting back to full fitness and getting every player we can ready for that accurate Stanley game. And just leaving mm-hmm. everything on that pitch in the last the, the last half of the season that, that we've got to play. You know, the first half of the season hasn't went brilliantly, which as I say, we need to leave absolutely everything on the pitch um and, and try to win every game I can un, un, until the end of the season. And that's how we'll put ourselves uh in the best position to do so. Well said, Jack. Um Michael, I'll come to you. Uh, I'll come to Conrad first. I'll, I will come to you after, Michael. It's just that you've done a video, um, obviously a preview. Go on, Conrad, if you want, and come to me last. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, obviously, I'll go to, uh, to Conrad. I'll just go back quickly back to the live chat. Um, Theon SEFC says, by the time we play Ackerton, we could be down in the 14th or 15th place. Uh, Rachel Brattel says, Sean, what's your honest thoughts on story? Um, well, like I say, he did show us. <laughs> <laughs> he did show us the, he did show us the paperwork um, and at the end of the day um, he's, he, uh, Nick Barnes has done an done a interview with him on, on the BBC Radio Newcastle um, a very reliable journalist they were, I believe the best journalist in the North East James Hunter has, uh, has also done an um, uh, interview with him he done it yesterday uh, BBC Look the, North had as well so. uh, BBC Look North but obviously when I do an interview it's, it's not allowed basically but you know that's just the way it is um, 
Mad Matt Mitty says, I, uh, I sent the video of Sean. I went on a Twitter to try, to try to get our boy the online same shop with the art with shirt and see the same, obviously, the disgusting um, tweets. I didn't even want to get into it, to be honest, but thanks for your support. I sent that uh, that uh, message on, on the on the YouTube channel. Thanks for that. Uh, Conrad, the results yesterday, mate. Um, do you think it was it went well for us? I mean, I know we're, we're going to have a few games to play back and there's been a lot of... Uh, this, I mean, uh, Ipswich have cancelled games... Bristol Rovers have Portsmouth that now have. Um, yeah, well. yeah, Peter, what's your thoughts on the, on the results yesterday, mate? Uh, I mean, it's like Jack said, we sort of really, at some point, we only have to concentrate on what we can do. We're not exactly at the stage of the season where we look to be relying on other people's results at this point on here. We're sort of watching ourselves. The best thing is that I was just having a look through on, on here. Each time we get to another round of fixtures, so on <laughs> Boxing Day, there's either one or two of the teams above us playing each other so I know we said crew snuck up others but on Boxing Day they've got Fleetwood you've got um, then Port, uh, Peter aren't playing you've got Portsmouth have a game we would have been playing Hull you've got Doncaster and Accrington are playing each other so they're up together I think on the 29th as well when I was skimming through just then there's a game uh, with, with sides around each other then I'm sure there is yeah uh, Hull and Lincoln play each other on the 29th um, mm-hmm. and Peter Brown oh, and were meant to play each other that weekend as well but that that's off at the moment now and there we obviously play Accrington at that time so they're in with us as well so uh, Fleetwood and Doncaster again on the 29th play each other so yeah. it's one of them that like some of them will they some of them will drop points they, they have to at that point on there so even if yeah we end up in whatever position we end up in by the time we play our next game not not every one of them will have won games. They it can't happen. Like they can't all win their games. Some of them will have dropped points as well. Yeah. So it, we won't be out of it. And, and like Jack says, it, it, as long as we come back concentrating on our own results and our own performances, it shouldn't matter too much what what the others have done. Yeah, well said, Conrad. Michael, before I come to you, I'll just go back to the chat. Uh, we Philly says, is Jack using a candle for his lighting? <laughs> it's not the best light, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the lamp here. Do you want to borrow it? <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite a different dynamic now. Normally, it's me in the live chat and Philly on here, and I can yeah. just hold abuse at him. But now we've uh, the roles oh, reversed. Like roles reversed. Uh. <laughs> All right. Any, anyway, uh, Matthew Lee says, Sean, how much did you, uh, William Story charge you for the uh, for the rich energy? <laughs> well, he gives us he gives us, a, he, gives us a, a, he gives us a full kiss for nothing. So he hey! didn't. He didn't. I must, I must, uh, I must he charged must... you 57 million and so you could pay for his bid. Once William Story <laughs> is the owner. Yeah. I, must have, I must admit, it's, uh, I don't know if he's, a, um, if he's a tried Red Bull, but I, I like Red Bull, but this is definitely better. And I'm not just seeing that. This, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. My mistake. No one's going to believe you. <laughs> I don't like any energy drinks full stopping. They're all disgusting. I must admit, I'm not overly struck. I'll tell you, breaking right. news, though. Breaking news. Rich Energy, new sponsors of SCFC Fan TV. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we want that's to get in touch. That's a good point, that, Michael. I, did, I, I have actually asked him about that, so I'll... You know. Sean, Sean. Yeah. Give him a story. William Story is going to make his own alcohol. <laughs> nice kind us... of lager. <laughs> rich. rich. Rich lager. <laughs> 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 Doesn't have the same ring to it, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> CNS uh, SESA says, Terry texting Mando. Terry, are you on Tinder? Terry, are you, are you on Tinder? That was my comment. Terry on Tinder. I'm actually sharing Sean's video on Facebook. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, nice one, nice one. Adam French says, Sean, you're a great jur- journalist. The work you do is uh, is honest and to the point. So take no notice of those haters and keep drinking your en- your, your new energy drink. Could be your new sponsor for the show. Well, watch this space. That's all I see. I obviously Philly and Terry is, is the bosses, but um, I have spoken to William about that, and we'll, we'll just have to see what we can do. I mean, anyway, if he wants to bid um, fifty-seven million for us, I'm 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 fine with that. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Michael Bowers, your great expertise as always. Uh, the results Friday <laughs> and yesterday. Um, obviously, I know you've done a video. Um, a review is that is that on, on the channel? Yet? I've, not, I've or... recorded one, but it's not no, it's, it's, yeah. it's going up tomorrow. That one, oh, right, right. we, we, okay, we, so, uh, we put a story out today and then that yeah. Yeah. tomorrow. Just to warn anybody watching that video, I do this a lot because I look at the fixtures on my PS4. So, uh, I'm looking if you're put off by that, don't watch it, but please try <laughs> to. And anyway, 
Uh, yeah, the fixture. Well, look, like, I think the others have said it really. Where you look, Hull Portsmouth. I did watch. That was the one game I did watch because it was. It was thankfully it was on television. It was selected for broadcast by Sky. Uh, and to be honest, I, I, th- I actually think if someone had their first team out against Hull, based off what I watched against them against Portsmouth, I think we would have beaten them. Um, I don't think. I think Hull looked very uh, flat, average, and I didn't think Portsmouth looked that better. Pompey just looked quite well organised, which they needed yeah. to be. Those big games, that's all you need, really. Sometimes, uh, although yeah. it was quite. Pompey didn't have a shot on target, and they still and still had uh, still had two goals to their name, uh, which was two on goals. Obviously, um, the other results, like I said, like Accurate and Blackpool, I actually think was the best result possible because Blackpool are just below us, and I'd watch out for Blackpool because they're starting to go on a really good run of form. Um, so that's the best result possible. Obviously, Wigan thankfully got something in the game. Swindon got something against Charlton. Um, Okay, yeah, Doncaster and Lincoln would have preferred they didn't win, but you can't have them all. Win. I'm just hoping by the time we play Accrington, I would take being say seven points off second with like uh, I would take uh, I would take being seven points or so off second with like a few games in hand. What's funny? I'm just I'm just furious. I'm curious. What's going I was, on? I was laughing at, I was laughing at the, um, Jack's comment. Uh, <laughs> he says that young that, that young lad with the blue top of the right knows his stuff. And obviously, Conrad, Whitney Conrad says, the lad in the blue is making stuff up. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, so the, for the full videos out, not every result went in our favour. Hopefully, by the time we play Accurton, we're not too too cut for a dr- And to be honest, if we could be 40 to 15th place, eh, what's new? We were there around about this stage last season anyway. So it yeah. doesn't matter. Just get to 6th um, place and then vote to end the season. What's that, sorry? Get to 6th place and then vote to end the season. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, play yeah play that's a good idea. idea. Yeah. <laughs> then we'll like, go up uh, and lose every game. Back, back exactly. to the live chat. Um, that's the dream. The NSOC says, Rich NG is nice. I've had some myself. It is actually nice. Honestly, lads, I recommend uh, uh, to try some, like, if he's if he's, if he's can, like, I mean, um, I think... William Story's PR Go on, you've, got, you've got an abundance of it. Send it over for Christmas. Yeah. And I, I, want, I wanted to give you all a can so you could all crack one open for tonight, but obviously, with a, you know... The, I'd love the to see Terry. I'd love to see Terry drinking a can when he's like. Where do we go? It's rich it's... energy from the mad mistake. Story. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, I've watched story... the videos. If story gets in, we will be sponsored by Rich Energy. Says Thean. Uh, Gary Talbot says Sean enjoyed your interview with Story. Also, um, yes, the interview with William Story is on the, is on our channel uh, now. It was on a few hours ago. So please, if you could, give it a watch. Um, hopefully, you enjoy it and ask the questions. What you know, the fans was sort of Sean, Sean. Uh, the mama mistake. Two seconds, um, Jack, my mistake, and I'll come to you. Over 2000 views already, so it's well liked already. There's yeah, quite a lot of positive good comments good. on there. Did a, good job, did a good job with the question, I think. Uh, Jack, Jack, so yeah, I'm trying to say in the live chat, uh, the casual observer who watches every week, I thought it was Lloyd Christmas in the top right hand corner, clearly taking a little dig at my haircut there. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your response? What's your response? Yeah. I don't have one. I don't have one. He's got a fair point. It's not. It's not the best. <laughs> uh, you got a cereal ball around your head, like for the cereal. Ball. Uh, I well, didn't know you were on about, Terry. so I googled it. Yeah. At least I show my hair, Terry. <laughs> Anyway, I'll just give my quick view on the, on the results. Yes, yeah, for me, I'll just be quickly and brief because I want to move on to other things. But, I mean, we, we're not going to be playing a game for a while. I think all we've got to do is just concentrate on ourselves. When, we're, when we do get... The players are obviously covered free and the, 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 the back fit and we, we are playing a game. We've just, got to, we've just got to get back to winning ways and, and hopefully go, go on a run um, and just see where it takes us. But I think we're doing it to invest in January, though. I mean, that's my sort of worry. I mean, will it be... Backed in January, I'm not sure. Um, but I think we do need to invest if we want to try and get in the top two. Anyway, moving on. Um, the, the, we're going back in time here. Um, obviously, we're, we're All put the from the Lorian. Conrad, Conrad put a tweet out, um, which does our, uh, the fan TV on Twitter. Um, we put a poll out, and I think uh, I didn't see the results, but I'm sure you said in, in the WhatsApp group that it was um, obviously this season's won, but was it, was it, was it uh, close to the votes, Conrad? To be honest, I've stopped looking actually this afternoon. So let me just check actually who won. Was, this would be was, funny if we I had to change. Ah, yeah. Doing, Big Sam like, won by fifty-seven percent. I was right. just thinking there wasn't that much in it. it was, no, that was pretty close. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. there, were two, there were two good. I mean, I see it, good seasons. Staying up is not really something you you know. Good seasons. <laughs> you should be proud about. I mean, I think me, me, yeah. me might have said like 
Yeah. It was, um, you know, celebrating staying up. It was, you know, sad, really. I mean, it was good staying up. And we did we did pull some, uh, you know, mir- miraculous uh, escapes off, didn't we, let's be honest. But, you know, us shouldn't have been, cele- you know, celebrating staying up. But anyway, right. Thank that. You, thank you that. Yeah. I will come to you first because I know you've got, you've got a, you've got a great um, brain t- and to go back as well. The season 2015-16, obviously, we'll start, um, obviously, Dick Avocat. He kept us up the season before. Um, and I think some remember the, the night at the uh, high, um, not the high, but at the Emmett Stadium, Emmett Stadium where um, we needed the draw to stay up. Um, and I, I watched that game on Sky. Dave Jones was in the studio. Um, he was biting his nails all the way through, but we managed to, to hang on. We drew him we stayed up. Um, Avocat was crying on the pitch. He, um, he showed his passion that night. We all thought he was leaving. He did leave temporarily. Then the fans persuaded him to come back. Um, he came back for, for, for a little while. Uh, he brought some players and he brought Jimmy and Lenz in. I think he brought in Mvia. Uh, did he bring did he bring in Kubo as well? Yes, he did. Kubo, um, yeah, 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 Lenz, yeah. Brought a few good players in. Quartes um, on a permanent, I believe. Yes. We got yeah. Barini yeah. back for the we got Barini back that summer as well. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Bowers, Dick Avocat in that season. Dong as well. Did he end Dong? No, I don't know. That was the one after the yeah. Jack, 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 Jack. No, 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 no. Anyway, Mike, I just gave him PTSD. Michael, your thoughts on first? I'll get your thoughts on uh, Dick Avocat and uh, obviously with, with him coming back and 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 obviously you know he, he did he did leave and he decided to come back. But where did he, where do you think went wrong for Dick Avocat in that in, in, in that season? Uh, you start with me because you know I've got an unpopular opinion on Dick Avocat. <laughs> <Hi. laughs> uh, yeah, to be honest, I didn't rate Dick Avocat that much. Um, don't get it wrong. I'll, I'll quickly give him where I will give him credit is that the season that he took over the fourteen fifteen season after Poyet got sacked. Um, I think he did fairly well to keep that squad up because there wasn't that much attacking quality within that side itself. And to keep us up, um, you know, and bearing in mind, we pretty much drew our way to survival. <laughs> Quite funny. But um, so he did all right there. I'll give him that. But my annoyance with Advocat is, well, but everyone, I remember I've been, I was on the way back from finishing uni that night, actually. And I was talking to someone and they asked, would you keep, a, uh, would you keep him on? And I said 50-50. And they were surprised by it. But the reason I said it was like, well, Poyet did exactly the same thing. Decanio did exactly the same thing. I didn't see what Advocat did that was massively any different. I mean, to be fair, Advocat probably had the worst squad to work with out of those seasons. But um, I just felt with Advocat, the start, the start of the 15-16 was horrendous. It was absolutely terrible. And I'm just going to go through the first eight games because I've got them. I'm very sad. I can remember them actually. <laughs> That's why I cut you first. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Michael, <laughs> test me with this. Tell me the games, and I'll try and guess the score. Go on, test. Oh, me. Oh, I, go on, I remember the one with you two two at home, and Len scored that chip. That well, was that's nice. that's oh, given one away. That, that was a spoiler. <laughs> spoiler. I haven't got that far yet. Um, the first game was Leicester away. Now, bearing in mind, Leicester did win the Premier League, but when we played them to start the season, they were tipped to struggle. But there was you that, go. Was that four two to Leicester? Yes. Okay. Yeah, well, obviously it was a loss. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll just, Conrad knows these. Next up, okay, uh, next up was Norwich at home, who won the playoffs I, the year before. I I only know this because um I I couldn't my mate couldn't go, so I literally I offered the ticket to my to my wife, and I was like, it'll, it'll be good, it'll be a good game, we'll, we'll be all right. And we were three yeah. nil down, three nil down at eighty eight minutes, and even Duncan Watmore had to score our one goal for, on his like. Debut when he came on, I think, or something like that, okay. wasn't it? So that, that okay. So three, uh, two losses. Great start, advocate. Uh, uh, what were uh, Swansea at home after that? One, one. Yes. <laughs> okay. Two. Next up was that, go on, Jack. Uh, trip, Jack, you have a go. To, a trip to Villa Park, who went on to finish with like, something like seventeen points that season. That's the one when Envia scored the free kick. Was that oh, one? Oh, one? that worldy. Yeah, oh, so I think, well, that, that not the, the score wasn't right, but the result was right. It was a draw. I think two two, two wasn't two, it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, two, two, yeah. yeah. Lens got, got our other one, I think, didn't it? The next game, like one of the was, worst Villa teams in history, and we yeah. drew two two. Mm. To be fair, at the time, Villa had actually started not that bad, bizarrely enough. Um, after <laughs> that was Tottenham at home. One nil Tottenham. Mason. Yeah, Brian Mason scored yes. late on. Uh, Defoe had a one on one chance in the first half when he hit the post. And I was like, oh, God. It's just not going to go for it. After that was the lovely trip to AFC Bournemouth. <laughs> Is that the one where um, Richie, who plays for Newcastle, scored an absolute worldie? Yeah, he scored an absolute worldie. I want to say one. I think it was one, two, one. I'm going to go one nil. One nil. 
2 0 Bournemouth. Oh, that was terrible. That's even worse. That's embarrassing, that result. Man United at Old Trafford. Oh. 2 0 loss. <laughs> 3 0 loss. Jeez. It was a 3 0 loss. We this is a great season so far. I think I was walking the dogs, and I think I, I was keeping an eye on the game, and then I saw right before half time we were 1 0 down. I was like, oh, that's it. Is that when Memphis Depay scored that game? Something like that. I think Something it was. Oh, my God. Playing for then, Man United. Jeez. Yeah. And then because Jack because Jack had to be a so-so and ruin it for us, the 2-2 <laughs> against West Ham when uh, Jeremy and Len scored that. Uh, so basically, to sum it up, right? So you had Leicester, oh, bear in mind that at the very start of the season, were tipped to struggle. Norwich, who didn't finish in the top two in the championship. Swansea and Villa, OK. We, but even then, we were lucky to get draws, at least uh, in both of those games, probably. Tottenham, there's our new sponsor. Tottenham, fair enough. Didn't expect anything out of that. Bournemouth, Away, Bournemouth. Uh, Man United didn't expect anything out of that. Man, Man, West Ham 2 0 up, didn't manage the game properly. For me, the biggest problem for me with Advocat was you could tell we were conceding. I mean, how many goals did we concede there? So Leicester, four, Norwich, three, Swansea, one, Villa, two. That's 10 goals conceded in the first four games. One against Spurs, two against Bournemouth, three against Man United. Two. That's 18 goals conceded. You, you're in the also, game. we played Exeter City in the Cup. And, and we still conceded, conceded three. three we conceded three against him. Yeah. I think he got knocked out by Man City. Down. Yeah. Sorry. Isn't that when it was? It was that in what's essentially the Czech Trade Trophy? And like three fans went down or something. Oh, have I got that completely wrong? No, no. It was. It was. It was the League Cup at our place. I think Defoe got yeah, a hat trick. I mean, yeah. even Rodwell Jack, got we two. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jack, we weren't that crap. Uh, yeah. We weren't on the second. No, but uh, no, was it under twenty? Oh, yeah, we've been on. I fully yeah. accept I am in a minority here, but for me, I felt advocate when you can when you, when you've gone from when he first came in, we we're actually all right defensively, we were fairly solid. But how can you go from that to conceding eight goals in the first eight games? Like that's conceding over two goals a game. Which mm. uh, I'm sorry, if advocate hadn't have left when he did, we would have definitely got relegated. Oh. Um, I, think there was, I thought there was no plan. He tried to get us to play really expansive football when the team couldn't do it. It's like, well, why don't you balance it? Like, balance it out. Get us to be solid at the back. What happened to that? But anyway, look, I'm in a, I accept I'm in a minority and I'm probably going to be getting hit in the comments for this, but uh, I didn't rate Advocat at all. But I will give one good thing about him. His departure led to Big Sam coming in. There you go. Nice. <laughs> Michael Van a bit there, but thanks for the thanks yeah, for that, Michael um, and Conrad. Uh, right, anyway, I'll just quickly go back to the live chat. Richard Wilde says, Jan still loves us. Uh, Mad Matt, um, just to wind you up, yes, I know what he's on about there. Uh, I think Matt, Matty Hartley says, uh, how do you subscribe? Tommy, Tommy asks. Um, well, <laughs> it's pretty easy, really. Uh, it's it's free to do so, he also puts. So I think he's taking it. It doesn't cost a penny. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't cost a penny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll just get your views on it, uh, Jack. Where do you think it's just quickly? Um, Dick Avocat, where do you think it went wrong for Dick Avocat? Uh, I think similar to what Michael said, like when, when it went wrong, it was because it, it was, well, I guess, a little bit like Parkinson, like a bit stringent. He didn't really want to change things. Like when he came in, he did really well to get us playing any attacking football because you look back at that team and you, you take Defoe out as a goal scorer who didn't really have much threat going forward anyway. So the, the job he did do to get us, you know, scoring any amount of goals towards the end of the season definitely needs to be recognised. But I think. When we started that first season, I just think he, he, he never wanted to change anything. And that was a key with a lot of Sunderland managers when it hasn't went wrong. And it was a pretty typical Sunderland in the Premier League under Ella Short uh, story when things just weren't working for us, but the manager just, just didn't want to change it. Uh, then Allardyce came in, obviously changed it, and he managed to get the squad playing coherently. Yes, he did Sam Pays in January, but even still we were doing OK before that as well. Um, so I, I think with Avocat, it, it was... It, it was more that, um, and maybe his heart wasn't in it, but it, it was just struggling to, to change things when it wasn't going right um, in the, the what would have been, well, essentially his second season. Mm. Um, Chase, that Jack, um, the man mistake, uh, what do you think it went wrong for Dick Alphacat in that season, mate? He basically just retired when he when he was going to in the first place, when he kept summing up, when he had that nil-nil draw against Arsenal. Yeah. Like everybody was like in tears. Everyone was over the moon, staying up. He should have went then. He wanted to go. His family, I don't think he wanted. His family didn't want to come back over and take be in charge of Sunderland. I don't think so. I think he, end of the day, that's where for me where it went wrong. I completely agree with Michael. I, I don't think he was a fantastic manager. He did did his job, what he was brought in to do, and kept Sunderland in the Premier League. And that is not mm. as much as really is so he didn't give him credit for. To be honest, I might yeah. be very harsh, but. I wasn't a massive fan, to be honest. Like I said, the football wasn't great. But uh, he, did, he did what he did, kept us in. I was eternally grateful from keeping us in the Premier League. And I wished him all the best. I wasn't overly 
over the moon when he come on for the following season. Like, I think there's always a time and a place, and there's sometimes yeah, you try and do it, steal a bit, a little bit too much. And I think he should have gone when he should have. Yeah, thanks, that, Terry. Um, Conrad's. Um, <laughs> it's like like we've already kind of alluded to. His heart was never really in it. He, once he'd done his job in the first sort of spell he was in, he should have just gone then and just yeah. gone out being like, "This is what I've done." Because yeah. Sam was still available at that time. So he just it, yeah. it, Sam. So like, if I remember rightly, it it felt it, it reeked almost of desperation that we were just chasing him, like instead of looking at any other target. I just remember thinking like, "There's other managers out there, like." We're in the Premier League. There's plenty of people who would quite happily take us over at this point and, and give us a give it a go. They've got a full season and they've got pre-season to, to sort of bring in players they want. It's not like they the other managers have all had to come in and work with what they've got. And even if you look at when when he came in, so obviously he beat Newcastle. Like that that's just a given. That's what we do when you get a new manager. But, <laughs> I mean, out of the results he got us, I never remember in any of these games blowing teams away. So we drew one one with with Stoke away. We beat Southampton at home, but it was two penalties because Jordi Gomez loved to dive and win a penalty for us. The Everton game where it hit Graham's arse and went Graham's in court. and then yes, Danny Defoe, was, and Defoe was offside for the second. Uh, then Leicester came and drew nil-nil, so they stayed up. And then we drew nil-nil with Arsenal. At no point did we actually play that well. We were just grinding points where we could, really, like... So it was that, I just think, like I said before, it just reeked of desperation that we didn't want to bother looking for someone else when he was already kind of here. Yeah. I think my view on, on Avocat was, um, I think, um, when, you know, he don't, he, he don't, he don't actually do a good job by keeping up the season before. Uh, I, I agree with what the man mistakes said, and you comment basically there. I think Mike has said as well, I don't know if Jack did. I think he, he kept us up that season. He should just, that, 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 that should have been left at that. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we sort of like forced him to come back when he sort of heart was, well, you know, it wasn't really in it to be to be fair. Yeah, but, he felt sorry for us, I think, because we were literally uh, pursuing and pursuing and pursuing. Sending flowers and the sat, you know, the fans and flowers. Mm. But he did have a part and shot at uh, Ella Short, didn't he? he um, I think he basically said that um, there was people spending, you know, 40, 50 million or something like that. And I think we only spent something like nine on lens. Um, I think we bought in uh, on loan. Um, was Marini was like ten million. Oh, yeah. right, right. I think what he was basically trying to say was, if you want to be, you know, be a success, I'll get the the route that we're in. You need to have about 50, 60 million. And Ellis Shaw just wasn't going to give him it. But that, that is was, true, but it would it would have helped if he was a bit more pragmatic with the squad. Actually, the competent manager would have been a good start. Right. But, but anyway, there's, there's two things. Sorry to interrupt you, Sean, but like. Yeah. There's a thing there. He bought, spent nine million on Lens, and obviously two seasons later, Moy spent sixteen million on Dong. They bought two players whose attitude were completely wrong for yeah. us. They weren't bothered exactly. about being here. So he he complains about money. This is advocate mainly, but he still got given nine million to buy a decent sort of winger, oh, and he bought yeah. someone who couldn't be bothered. And then Kazri, mm. I don't think cost us much more than maybe four or five when we. To be fair, Kazri uh, did cost uh, us around the same figure. Uh, the point, the point. Sorry, the last point I'll make is the point is, Allardyce got less money than Advocat was, and yet mm. he managed to do better with the squad. Yeah, yeah and exactly. Four might of course as well. Let, let, let's just um, yeah. <laughs> let's not talk about them. I, was, I want to ask. Yeah, that. yeah. Jump ahead. <laughs> good manager. Yeah. Did, did they mention? Did they mention the, 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 them, them players like the ones who uh, Allardyce uh, signed? Because I want to, I want to come to that in a bit. Because obviously, I was going to I was going to ask you a question about that. Uh, in fact, um, but like you see, I think Dick Avocat. I think he should have. We shouldn't have really come back, but he did. And I think his heart wasn't in it. And now he was. Uh, he was. He was sacked in. in uh, I think it was the West Ham game. Or did, or did he, did he resign? No, well, he, he resigned after the West Ham game. Yeah. I think it was the West Ham game. We didn't turn in. We we drew two two, didn't we? I think it was. Uh, Lens got sent off after that, he yeah. scored. There was a crack and goal by Lens. Well, he <laughs> chipped it. Yeah, I remember oh, that. Like you see, um, I've got any views on that. Um, I'll just quickly go, go back to the live chat. Uh, Adam French, um, really, really don't want him back. So, of course, his heart wouldn't have been in it. I think he's, he's referring to where uh, yeah. Dick Avocat. Uh. Um, Nate Edwards says, MV will always get on my nerves that we never permanently signed him. He was uh, yes. written Great. by the phone. Strong, yeah. I'm still heartbroken at that now. <laughs> Matt, Matt Hartley says, he's still struggling. <laughs> Still struggling, so called one on one, and the police couldn't help me subscribe. So I don't know what to do. I'm a bit stuck here. <laughs> <laughs> He's obviously talking to me. Well, Matty, I'm sure, 
I'm sure if you've got a Twitter account, you better you better subscribe uh, to, to the channel. Mate. So it's you know mm-hmm. it's absolutely free, it doesn't cost a penny. Hit the like button as well. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'll just come to you, like Jack. Um, and that season, <laughs> uh, Big Sam was obviously appointed um, to Dick Avocats. He was his successor. He come in, I think his first game was the Newcastle game, I think. Um, first, yeah, the second game. Second. 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 His, first game was away, his first game was West Brom away. It was always there was that sort of the the cycle of like four managers. You sack a manager, lose a game, and beat Newcastle. <laughs> that lit me. Uh, his second game, his second game was the the, the derby, um, which we eventually won three uh, nil. Um, what do you make? What do you make of the, the the big Sam appointment, Jack, and also his his first win in the derby? Well, I don't think there was anyone better out there for the job, and I think it'd been at probably uh, since the start of the season. Really, I think. Every Sunderland fan was absolutely buzzing when we got him, and I don't think there was a single person on the planet who the, the job was more suited to. Uh, obviously, the proofs in the pudding as well. I mean, he completely turned us around that season, got the the three nil against Arsenal. Like I said, and, and I, you know, one thing I always say is closing in on that season. I think that's the the best I've ever seen Sunderland play, probably in my lifetime. Uh, well, probably since mm-hmm. Steve Bruce, uh, who, who, who was my the the first manager I I ever watched us play under. Um, I, <laughs> No, I, I think that, that just proves how great Allardyce was, where the football we were playing and the results we were getting, I'd never seen us as, as progressive and moving forward as, as well as we had done it under Allardyce. So solid defensively and just creating so many chances and scoring so many goals going forward. I, I don't think we could have appointed anyone better at the time. And as I say, proofs in the pudding with how the results went and under Allardyce. I know, obviously, he never got that second season like uh, a, a lot of managers did under us. Um, but things didn't go wrong under him as they did under every single one in such a, a short period of time. Yeah, uh, cheers for that, uh, Jack. Uh, my mistake, um, the appointment of Big Sam in the 2015-16 season, uh, um, do you think it was a, a good appointment? And obviously his first uh, win was the, the, the derby when we won 3-0. What was your maintenance of the appointment and the, that win as well? Right, clearly it was a good appointment, wasn't it? Because, I mean, we started off in 19th position and he kept us up in 17th position, so it was a good appointment. He had, was it 31 games in charge? He won nine, draw nine, lost 13. I think it was something like a 29% win record, but, and also a massive win percentage. But at the end of the day, there were some good results and mm-hmm. in, in, in the nine victories, some really exciting football matches. Good, good win against Newcastle. He got four points in total. Obviously, Defoe scored in the second match, but um, it was a decent win. I was over the moon. He was the first man. Is he the first man to manage both Newcastle and Sunderland? Um, I'm sure he isn't the first, but I can't think of who else. I'm sure, he's um, to do it, like, but uh, I might be wrong. But never mind. But yeah, I was over the moon, big Sam. Steve Bruce manager. as well. Steve oh, Bruce. Bruce now. Ah, yeah. Yeah. He would have been but the second one, though. Been. He was the first manager, though. Well, he was the first oh. manager to manage both teams. Oh, right, right, right. He might, he might have been my eye. He might have been my eye. Anyway, yeah, it was a good appointment. I was over the yeah. moon. Right, Chase, that. Stuff. Chase, that. Obviously, I'll just get your views on the appointment and then I'll ask you about the, the January transfer for the window because that, was for me, was the you know a, a big part of Big Sam, what he did. Yeah, uh, he was the me? first one, too. Um, yeah, I've just Googled but, it as well. <laughs> um, obviously, I'll just go back to the live chat. Uh, was a comment. Big Sam was the only manager. This is Alan Robinson. He says Big Sam was the only manager I have uh, was so sorry to say leaving the 55 years I've been supporting the lads. I think me and Michael's. Well, I think all of us agree it was. Oh, it was crap when he went when he left. The way he left, it was awful. I, I mean, we wouldn't be in the, you know if only if only it's always that and it's, it's just anyway. The says, Michael St- Michael Stato Bowers. <laughs> <laughs> Michael what? Uh, no, uh, I think it's says, Michael, Michael Berry Sado Bowers. That's oh, right. <laughs> no, no, Mike, Mike, Michael's a great guy. He's, he's, he's got, got great, uh, you know, he's got a great football brain. Um, Thien SFC says, breaking news, it costs five pounds to subscribe. It's not absolutely free. Well, Thien, no, I, uh, I know that you're lying there because it is absolutely free. It doesn't cost a penny. Cost uh, a penny. Give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing, please. If you're not like what we're doing, give us a thumbs down, but we'll prefer it if you give us a thumbs up. Um, anyway, um, who wants to go next on the views on Big Sam? Conrad or Mike? Conrad, Conrad, yeah. Come on, Conrad. Loved it. (laughs) (laughs) 
short <laughs> to the point. I just wanted to save a bit of time. Yeah, just uh, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> good. Yeah, like I think when he came in, there was this thing of like, oh no, we're going to play hoofball football. But if you remember, even in the early bits, we we never once played hoofball. We had Jermaine Defoe up front. Like, who are you hoofing it to? Look at us now. We're still trying to hoof it to Will Grigg before Johnson, of course, <laughs> on there. So we never once did this hoofball thing that he gets tarnished with when he when he was mm. our manager. Yeah. Anyway, Michael, um, I, I know me and you, we were uh, massive supporters of Big Sam. And um, sad when he yeah. was the, the way he left, the, you know, it was, but when he, when he was first appointed, were you like, was you know, were you over the moon? And obviously the Derby deal, that we won three, that was a great, it was a great deal as well, wasn't it? Yeah, well, the, the only positive thing about still not being the Premier, I hate playing against Newcastle. Even when we had that good run, it was like, oh, but we've got our good run to lose here. Um, <laughs> and look, I'll give Newcastle this. We were battered. <laughs> uh, that derby, the sixth one. First off, we, Jesus first nice. half, we were, they were all over us. Oh, they were the, the sending off and the penalty completely changed the game. Well, actually, did it? Actually, even at 10 men, at 1-0, Newcastle had a couple of really good chances to score. Uh, so it was probably, oh, I'm going to swear anyway, it was probably the shithousiest 3-0 win I can ever remember in my life. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was I just remember point. thinking, oh, like, fuck. I'm so glad it's a red card, but there's no way that's a red card. It wasn't <laughs> red. I, I know, I know there's, there might be a... Take it, take it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For me, I think it was a penalty, because if you get, cause any other oh, t- anywhere penalty, else yeah. on the pitch, it probably would have been a free kick. But no. I can see how if you was given against you, you wouldn't like it. There was no way for me that was a red. I was even shocked at the time it was a red. Uh, the mm-hmm. appointment itself was a very good one. One of the biggest things that will come on to, I'm sure Sean will, uh, for the January window is yeah. Big Sam for me. Yeah, okay. Big Sam for me is the only manager I've seen at Sunday that's gone like this. You know, the team lacks this. Uh, lacks this. Lacks yeah. This. Hey, yes. Yeah. Let's go and sign it. Whereas yeah. everyone else is like, Hey, we want pace. Nah, Danny Graham's available. Let's sign him instead. <laughs> he's he's right. Written, right. Being serious, he's the only manager I've seen Sunderland have who has actually addressed what we needed and went and signed it. Why is it so difficult? I don't get it. Yeah. yeah. Jack, uh, uh, me and I don't like this. What's he like? No, no, no. That's, that's it. I, I could just see Sean about to butt in and you just kept talking and Sean just went. <laughs> uh, sorry, Sean, go on. I tried no, to sorry, 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 mate. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> any, anyway, what I want to ask you was. <clears throat> In that season, I thought we had we had a decent enough squad, but right, I'll come to you. I'll come to you, Jack, first. In that season, yeah, um, I mean, I'm not the team here. I was that famous three-two victory against Chelsea at home was one of the, the, the greatest oh. ever games at, at, at the Steam, and I was unbelievable. The atmosphere was electric. It was just you know the, the the noise, the team we had. I mean, I'll go back to January when Big Sam signed. He signed well. He busy signed. He signed Jan Kirchhoff. He signed um, yeah, Wabi Kazri. He signed, oh, he signed God, Steve, uh... yeah, he signed Steve <laughs> Harper, Dam and Doy. Yeah, <laughs> but um, the, the question is here, here, that's I'll come to you, Jack Fessers. Obviously, we signed Jan, Jan Kirchhoff, we signed um, Wabi Kazri, oh, yeah, and we signed uh, uh, Lamaine Corney, them three players, right? Do you think, Jack, them three players was obviously Big Sam, great the way he, sat, the, the way he bought them as well, very cheap, they've done wonders. What would you have stayed up uh, if you never signed them players? Definitely not because they made the difference. Lamin Corne has to be when he want, when he wanted to play football. To me, has to be one of the best defenders I've ever seen at this club in my lifetime, which admittedly is a lot shorter than everyone else on this panel. I will admit. Um, I'll go with that. It's fine. Uh, but you know, Kazri as well. Look at the amount of chances he created, and look at the amount of goals he did score. Important goals as well. The body against Chelsea. The, the, I believe he I believe it got given as his goal at uh, the free kick against Man United that might have took it off someone else. Created so many chances. Mm. I see Corne has got to be the probably the best defender I've ever seen at Sunderland in my lifetime. Uh, and, and Jan Kirkhoff as, as well, to me, he, he completely transformed our team because he could sit off just behind the other the other four midfielders and, and the four up front. We had so much freedom to go forward. He actually allowed the full-backs to get forward and attack so much. It was an absolute unit just in front of the defence. And it was Jan Kirkhoff that allowed us to go forward and express ourselves in the way we did and play that free Roman football with Barini, Kazri and Defoe as, as the main three interchanging scoring goals creating chances um, together. So I, I think, to be honest, I don't think there's, I don't think there's any way you can possibly say that we would have went up, but we would have stayed up if it wasn't for them because they completely and entirely transformed our team. Cheers that, Jack. Uh, great, um, uh, you know, you've got a great um, great thing of the game. It's uh, second and on for your age as well. I think, are you 18 now or not? Or still no, I'll be 18 in February. 
Uh, anyway, um, the man mistake who's chilled out there. So there's a couple of comments. Looks like he's sleeping. <laughs> Terry looks like a web cam, cam girl. Says man, Mac of eighty eight. Being a work on the answer. He's set of his only fans. Um, I was more laughing at the one it says. All Terry needs is DiCaprio to paint him like a French girl. <laughs> <laughs> the N- That's what should be given away, not who you are. Yeah. <laughs> Dean SCFC says, oh, uh, yeah. don't forget, and Doy, he, 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 he come to, so did Big Sam bring him as well? And, and the Jack yeah, he came alone yeah. for the rest oh, of the season, but I don't think he did much. I think he, he got used as a sub. He used to play like, on the right wing and up front, but he didn't really do much, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Robbins really says, all Terry, needs, all Terry needs is Leon and Leon to cut you to paint him. Ha ha ha. <laughs> anyway, uh, the man mistake. Rips downstairs as well. <laughs> <laughs> the man mistake. Um, obviously, uh, the question to you is, the, 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 the January transfer window, Big Sam, he, he brought in, like you say, Kirchhoff, uh, Cornia, Kasri, and a couple others unknown. But do you think that January window was a really good window and that was the reason why we stayed up that year? But yeah, he brought in the KKK. He flipping, the, I mean, he brought in the tank, Cornia. Yeah, the tank, he was a fan. For me, Cornia, like, I mean, he was, he was like the, a brick shit house tank he brought in. Brilliant in defence. I mean, eventually he did fall a bit, so he lost the interest in playing for Sunderland. But when Sam was there, he played absolutely fantastic football. Two goals. He, he, he scored twice against Everton. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. 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 the corner. Brand- he also, he, he technically scored against Man U, but it was given as De Gea's own goal. He headed it and it sort of <laughs> pinged <laughs> off the both of them. Yeah, I remember that. that was, was that when I mean, Kazri like, the free kick and it, it took a knock and then it went off the post? No, we won that. We won 2 1. So Kazri scored after like oh, a minute yeah. with that free kick and then Kone yeah. got a header later on. Aye. It's a corner from Kazri. Was it from Kazri? I think the corner as well. Probably was. Yeah, Kazri yeah, was literally yeah, was. creating everything for us back then. <laughs> and like Michael alluded to earlier on, the, the atmosphere against Chelsea and the atmosphere at Everton against. Everton as well. I mean, the size of the crowd, the, the volume of the noise. It was. I mean, when have you ever had that kind of noise at the stadium? Like ever? No. Probably never. Probably never. It was absolutely brilliant. That was all, all courtesy of Big Sam, who was great signings. Kerchoff was a good signing, but he was a bit. I thought he was injury prone a little bit, which wasn't it wasn't his fault. I thought when he first came in, mind, I thought he was a little bit off the pace. But once you warmed up to him nicely, it was I thought it was a great signing. But yeah, fantastic job from Big Sam. Yeah, um, just quickly go about the live chat. Um, Ronan says, Word on the MVS, MVS story. Um, <laughs> SFC Vision says, Can we all agree that Cornet is better than uh, Van Dyke? <laughs> well, those six Ronan. months he could have been, he, t- he took him apart in it. He mixed him when we played Southampton away, he mixed him to set up Defoe. Uh, Tell me, absolutely half the Ayatore as well. Yeah, That's when he just oh, annihilated him. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, Andrew Robbins, remember when Corny uh, took out uh, Chitori? That was unbelievable, that night. Like, right. We didn't even need to win the game. We just absolutely annihilated like the strongest player in the league and just went, get up. <laughs> you know, the thing is, well, we battered City that game as well. Yeah. Yeah. I know. We'll really well, didn't we? Uh, one nil City, I think. But well, anyway, well. Um, Michael Bowers, the January transfer winner that year, do you think it was that was uh, the pivotal moment? I mean, he... It's the Undertaker. Oh, sorry, Terry sat up. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? Can you just imagine, right? The Undertaker. They might imagine the Undertaker with Big Sam's face photoshopped onto it. Um, Big, Sam. Um, <laughs> Big Sam knockout. <laughs> the dead man has risen. <laughs> Michael Bowers, the January transfer window. Yeah, um, you can tell us. Cornier, Casley, and, and Kirchhoff, them three players, as Jack touched on, um, and, and the Mama State as well. Um, there were three great signs, weren't there, to be fair? They were absolutely. I will touch when my mistake said Kirchhoff was injury prone. Actually, Big Sam managed him quite well. He did. The, yeah. I can't remember many occasions under Allardyce where Kirchhoff got injured that much, at least not for long spells. Maybe after his first couple of weeks. But um, those three signings, it shows great imagination from Big Sam to realise what we needed. And like I said earlier, go and get it. Like Kirchhoff was seven hundred and fifty thousand. I think it was from Bayern Munich. And I, actually, I'll, I'll, I think I was listening to a Southern podcast after the Newcastle game, the one all. And I'm sure, and bearing in mind, Newcastle had Shelby, they had Wijnaldum, they had Meet Rich, they had players in the they, 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 they had millions invested on the pitch. And even a couple of Newcastle fans have been saying Kirchhoff was the best player. Kirchhoff yeah. was absolutely the yeah. best player. And he did, he, what, what Jack said was spot on. He, he controlled the midfield very, very well, which allowed us to create chances going forward. 
Corny when he could be bothered. The big Sam, but let's forget past the first six months. The big Sam, the proper version of Corny, he was a brick, absolute monster. Yeah. And even when he took out Yaya Torre, who at the time was one of the Premier best midfielders, he just yeah. flattened him and left him and just yeah. left him on the ground. It was, just, it was just, it was such that commanding presence and reassurance. And mm-hmm. obviously, when you look at um, uh, before that Dower Scottish so so David Moyes decided to <laughs> and not bother to use him. Um, Kaz, Kaz, Kazri was just unbelievable. His, his set pieces were good. He scored a, like it's even that game against Chelsea. It gets overshadowed because Defoe's winner. But that goal against Chelsea, what a stunner! Volley. First time volley outside the box, rockets into the top corner. And like mm-hmm. Terry said, those three signings made such a big difference. It improved the spine of the team, which to this day it still baffles me how Sunderland managers before and after have never looked at what was and just went and did something called go and get it. And you look mm. at it, you have, look at the midfield. We have, I think at the end of the season, we were playing a 4-3-3. We had someone like Envia, Kirchhoff and Catamol dictated, absolutely dictated the midfield. Even Larson would come in if like off the bench. Yeah, or come in uh, Larson, yeah. You know, yeah. But yeah. Those, those three signings, made such a difference. And just quickly on Big Sam's tactics as well. When we, I was worried about who fall football, not once did we... I thought <laughs> some of the, some <laughs> of the football, football. Was, football was actually pretty yeah. good. Yeah, um, it was, it was I think good if, football you look at it, in Sam, yeah. 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 The big man managed to get Jermaine Dufour to play up front on his own, and he still managed to get double five figures. Foot, out. Five foot seven, five foot seven. How, how good that. management is that? Exactly. He basically exactly. drafted the team what we need, and also he turned Van Anholt into a half decent defender for six months, where he actually defended. Yeah. Um, Andrew Yedlin was all right. There was, there was a, oh, do you know what? It really upsets me that we lost him. Even if you looked at that team, if we had big yeah. Sam, the whole season would have been nowhere near a relegation battle. Nowhere near. Team, I bet the team did like that. That team against Chelsea, I mean, uh, exactly. unbelievable. Like that, um, that, that game that Terry went on about was like that. That the moment Defoe scored against Chelsea is the loudest I've ever heard the stadium alive. And it oh. just goes to prove when players want it and when they give the fans something to shout about, that's what you can have. Obviously, not right now. We're nowhere near close to it, unfortunately. But that right then is an example of what you could have. Why that club was underperforming and underachieved for 10, 15 years, and that Everton atmosphere. Wow, incredible. And that's yeah, well, not the 17th as well. Well, well said, Michael. Well said. Um, Conrad, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you in a minute. Just, uh, I'll just quickly go back to the live chat. Uh, Stu Shaw says, is Jack broadcasting from the uh, top of a bunk bed? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> or, or is he sitting on top of a wardrobe? Because <laughs> you can see the top of your curtains. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they've asked me to fuck it to be fair. Um, Shoe Shaw, uh, Theon Conrad is a shaven. Oh, Ch- Ch- Chewbacca. 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 <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, um, Conrad, the, the, Jan- the January window, um, Big Sam, he's got, a, he's got a knack, he's done it wherever he's managed. He always seems to get bargains in the transfer market, and I think he's going to write bargain when he got Kirchhoff, uh, Konya, and Kazri. Three players who really did make a difference. I know we're, we're short for time, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep it very quick. Um, yeah. Everything that I wanted to say has been has been said. Just everyone have a look at Terry as well. Uh, the only thing I also wanted to highlight was... French girls, Jack. <laughs> does everyone remember Kirchhoff's debut against Tottenham where he was at fault for all four of their... Oh, yeah. 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 He was awful. But we played, him in def- we played him as a defender in that game. And then when we moved him to defensive midfield, as like sweeping up in front of them, he was, he was an absolute... He, he could oh, beat anyone pretty, on their day. He was pretty pretty. He was so well. underrated, Kirchhoff on there. I, I loved him. But he's not in Via, and I will still always cry about him, Via. And uh, I'm just so looking, look, looking, at, looking at the squad here, man. Look, the, 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 I mean, I think you played a 4 3 3 system that year, uh, Big Sam. I'm not, I think it depends on, on how you look at it, like 4 3 3 or 4 1 4 1, maybe even 5 4 1 if you want to look at that. Possibly, way. I could have been a 4 1 4 1, Jack, you right. I mean, Yedlin right back. Sim, Big Sam come in. He couldn't defend Yedlin, could he? Big Sam just found a way. Van Arnold, great going forward. Pierce, you know. But Van Arnold even got, he, he, he got him to defend well as well. They didn't Kone, need to defend when you had Kone and Kabul Kone in the Kabul. back, though. That back four, though, I mean, that back four was solid. Yedlin, Kone, Kabul, Van Arnold was class. And you had Catmull sitting with Kirchhoff and Villa. Barini on the right, Kazi on the left and Defoe. Oh, God, and then on the bench, you had Larson to come on. I might have mentioned Robwell, but, I, you know. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, then and what more, but like you see it, I mean, the three signings, um, that game against Chelsea, I think... Um, you know, it was it was just unbelievable. How Chelsea they took the leads um, twice, and, we, and, we, twice. and I, we showed a lot of resilience in that game. Uh, Kazri's uh, volley was was just absolutely sublime. When I mean, it was just a cling struck. It was just but, the, the sort of like the knack of a player just to see that ball coming down. He didn't have a, a second thought in his mind other than I'm smashing this in the top corner. Yeah. 
and it's been a long time since we've had a player who got the butt just saw a ball coming down and went, I'm hitting this. Yeah, the Terry got sent off as well. Uh, at the end, no, yeah, he got sent off at the end. In added time, we were already three two up, but yeah, John Terry got sent off. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, you know what? Was that, was that the game? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, it was literally like in the last minute or so. It was yeah. literally. Oh, like, like, oh, like. oh, I know I got sent off. I don't know. I can't remember if it was that game, Michael. I was going to say I want to mention something statistically as well. If you look at the last nineteen games, the exact second half of that season. Sunderland only lost four matches, and all four of them were to, were, to, were to West Ham, Man City, Tottenham, and Leicester. Leicester won the league. West Ham Tottenham finished, with. and both Tottenham and Man City, I think, finished in the top four. And only Tottenham one the of third, the third, despite being in a two-horse race. Well, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it was basically only one of those games was comfortable. Tottenham, it was the only, only game we lost comfortably. Man City battered, should have got something out of. West Ham probably should have got something out of. Leicester was even probably until the 60th minute. And then obviously it only won that got the second goal because we were chasing it. So the point yeah. is, the Sam instilled a real good mentality in that side. And it just, and one of my biggest regrets with Sunderland is what would have happened the following season if Big Sam had stayed? You know? yeah. I mean, if he was back as well, Mike, I mean, we did find out later on that uh, I think he, Big Sam got interviewed by... Um, um, Graham Fogg, Fogg, yeah. Very good pod. And, he did, Very good and he, did, he did see it on there that... Um, he would have stayed. Ella Short was going to definitely hundred percent back him, but I think Ella Short knew he found, he found, he finally, finally found the manager that was just was perfectly fit for Sunderland. Do you know what mm. I mean? I mean, and I was a bit hands were tied with. But the... bloody Roy Hodgson in England against Iceland ruined that Sunderland for I years and years, and years to come. <laughs> so, I mean, that's still... good. Just come back. We'd have beaten team. Iceland and lost to France. We'd have still had Sam Allardyce. <laughs> I think K- Kirchhoff was was well managed by Big Sam as Michael. Not really yeah. on the head there. I think he was well managed. Big Sam knew he had sort of um, injury concerns, but he just managed him in the right way. He got the best out of him. And then the season after, what happens? David Moyes didn't play a game. But that just goes to show again, man management. Yed, he gets well, the best at Yedlin. He gets the he best came on a couple of times, man, but he would yeah. always then just go off injured again for like four games. And you'd be like, right, yeah. well. Well, like you say, Kazri as well, Corny, them two. Big Sam was getting the best out of Kazri. He was getting the best out of Corny. Just couldn't be I mean, in the mind. Okay. I just showed you the, the, how good Big Sam was, my management skills and this, that, and the other. And it was just yeah. such a shame. It's such I a shame. The, I mean, the best way to sum up is the reason we remember it so much is if you remember that night at the Everton game, stand, yeah. standing in there, applauding the players around, and you, everyone had this sense of, this is it now. This is how we break out of this. Is this is how we break out of this? And everyone yeah. was thinking this is going to be such a good summer. We're going to get in some another yeah. few players. Not we don't need an, uh, an overhaul. We just need a few players. Just again, just like he did in January. It would have just it was that heartbreak of yeah what actually happened next and how yeah. it all just just fell apart. Michael, that's the big thing I want to point out. Now I know it sounds like a hypocrite that we were of the atmosphere of that night when we say that seven and I believe rightly seventeenth wasn't something to. No, about. But the reason that this one felt different is exactly what Conrad said. It felt like there was a momentum change here where it felt like some of them are finally going to start punching at their weight in the Premier League under Big Sam. And actually, he's, re- he's a good manager. He's a competent one. He's recognised what we need in the window. He's got us playing some half-decent football without having to spend that much money in the grand scheme of things in the Premier League. And it was mm-hmm. the fact that team, that manager, when we stayed up, we thought, right, we've done that. What can we do next? What what else can happen? And yeah, I'm not going to lie. Relegate Newcastle was a bit of a sweet moment. I'm not going to... The other way around, they'd be saying the same thing. But that wasn't the main thing. It was the fact that we finally had... Every time we stayed up under previous managers, maybe with the exception of Poyer, I didn't feel, oh, right, we can progress next year. Big Sam, mm-hmm. I absolutely had that feeling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I agree with Michael there when he says, like, we felt as if we've had a real, a real momentum and we actually built something for the first time yeah. ever un- under uh, yeah. all the dice. Mate, you see, just you felt you felt like that game against Everton, we've got the right man. He, you know, we've got Corny playing at his skin. Van Arnold, we've got Kirchhoff. Maybe his maybe Kirchhoff might have been good the next season. But MVA, MVA is he, definitely going to sign. He loves us. The, four, yeah. the four would have been there. We would have, you know, Kabul maybe, crying probably, at the crowd because he crying, loves us so it, much. Yeah, Pickford, Manone. He would have brought players in as well. Oh, it's mm. just like, it's just so, like, you know. Terry's that, crying. Oh, God. I know. It's, 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 um, the, it's the one big if moment with Sun and Ned. It's yeah. what, what if some allies didn't leave? Like, as, as daft as it sounds, we could genuinely be pushing for Europe and not and not the championship, like, all these yeah. years later, you know. 
Right, right. Anyway, lads, um, time's just quickly, um, I, I was reading a dear, I think we might have been yesterday, Grant Lebeter got the um, the goal of the month award for the Sky League bet, League One. So it's just quickly, um, his goal was, uh, as Conrad said, a thunder. Thunder bastard. That's the one. <laughs> Jack, what, what do you make of uh, Grant Lebeter's uh, goal of the month? Against, well, uh, that was absolutely class. I mean, I remember just kind of watching the ball get passed over to him and just thinking... <laughs> He might hit that, but he's not going to. And then he did, and just the eruption in my house. Honestly, it was it, it, it's what like, probably what, what, probably the best goal for me, maybe until Maguire's against Portsmouth in the playoff semi final uh, in the mm. first season. Conrad, I, think, uh, <laughs> I, I think Conrad put it perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, Michael, what's your feelings of the of that great goal by Grant Lever? Can I just point out how sad it is that we're actually celebrating having a good manager and good players and we're now celebrating a goal winning goal of the month for League One. League One. Um, <laughs> but any yeah, uh, that's just short. See, Terry's done it. He shows how far we've fallen. Um oh, but remember, we're delusional for expecting to go up, apparently. Oh, all right. Anyway, though, that goal was great. Uh it was but it, it it's a shame it wasn't the winning goal. Thanks, Parkinson. But um, there you go. Great goal, deserve to win it. Yep, chase that, Michael. Uh, Conrad's already described it, he described it in the best words. Quickly, the my mistake. Uh, Grant Lepper is thunder. I don't want to say that. You know, thunder. Bastard. That's the one, right? Um, his goal was outstanding, wasn't it, to be fair? It was a great goal. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, it was a good goal, but I don't really care about goal of the month. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a fair point, to be honest, like. Yeah. <laughs> Terry's been a world yeah, won the game and not won the goal of the month. If we won the game, we would remember it more. But, yeah. 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 And I would like to see it. Um, you know, it's, it's just... <laughs> You think I'm, I'm sad now about thinking about that season. Big sad. Sad. It's just gets you, it gets you thinking, doesn't it? But uh, you know, it is what it is. But anyway, that just about wraps it up. The mammoth stay quickly. I'm just no, I'm just more sad. There's no sun in football for a few days. Yeah, 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 it's <laughs> Am I gonna do now? I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy Christmas Terry, now. Terry, what, 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 you, you could enter a competition on here, you can enter a competition on SAFC Fan TV. Yeah, Indeed. I was going to come with that. Uh, it's, yeah, um, I know there's a few games. We're going to be missing a few games. We're going to try our best to uh, make, Con well, my mistake, uh, Conrad, and Mike, we're talking to the group, but we're going to try and just keep uh, keep the, 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 the channel um, flowing in the next next couple of weeks, just try and do something just to keep it, you know what I mean? But um, it's, it's an art crap that there's, we're going to miss yeah. football for a couple of weeks, but it is what it is, and let's just hope the players can all return safely and we can get back to playing football, you know what I mean? On Mama the Steve. next live stream, we're all going to sing a Christmas song each. No, I'm uh, not. Thank God, I probably won't be on that one. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you're taking my. You might be, you might be, because you're, you're the young lad, so you 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 you'll be one with uh, leading leading it, uh, Jack. <laughs> anyway, Jack leading the chorus. Anyway, um, just quickly before before we go, um, there's a competition starting at 8 p.m. on our on our YouTube channel. Uh, Michael Bowes has got it there. It's a signed Julio artist shirt, and all no. you've got to do. All you've got to do is comment Arca uh, on the YouTube channel, and that's all you've got to do when you're in the air uh, in the prize. Yeah, there's uh, a post on our channel on the if you yeah. go to community under SAFC Fan TV, the post will be there. Just comment Arca, and as long as you're subscribed, you you're in, and I can check who's subscribed. So yeah, definitely. Sorry, sorry, Sean. If you can get like 340 people to try and subscribe, you might be in with a better shout. <laughs> Jack, you want to get in there quickly, mate? Yeah, uh, not that I've got anything to give away, but there's my channel to subscribe to as well, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I, was just a, I, was just I was just about to see it. I was just about to see it before. I was going to put that in before at the end. Anyway, um, that just about wraps it up. <laughs> quickly, <my mistake. laughs> Jack, Jack, give away the candle. Give away your candle. <laughs> I didn't have a candle, man. It's just me. It's just me. Yeah, uh, the light or whatever it is. <laughs> Jack, any, take, any, take Terry, like one of your French girls. <laughs> anyway, we went over the time. Went over the time. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, don't forget to watch the William Story interview if you can, um, and also subscribe to Jack Dodds' channel, the Red and White. With, is it the Red and White uh, podcast on Red YouTube? Podcast, yeah, yeah. Go and subscribe to Jack. Go and, uh, also, the fans react, but most of all, subscribe to our channel. It's absolutely free. I'm Michael Bowers and um, the Mama Steaks channel. Don't forget to subscribe to them as well. So, from myself, Sean Middleton. From Jack Dodds and the Mama Steak and Michael Bowers, Conrad Lee, we will see you next Sunday because obviously Thursday it's uh, you know Christmas Eve. So we'll see you next Sunday. Take care. Take care. See you later. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Take care.